Today we're bringing you another DIY project. Um, I shot a deer, it's archery season here in Ohio. We have some trim. Um, we're gonna start, the first DIY project that we're gonna do is a smoked jalapeno and cheddar sausage. Um, so we have some deer trim, we have all of our ingredients laid out on the table, we have some pork fat, we have some, some pork trim. We're gonna get everything blended together. We're gonna run it through our made with meat dual grind grinder, and then we're gonna run it through the stuffer, and we're gonna hang it here in our EnviroPack smokehouse. So let's just get started. We like to run the blue liner in our lugs, just helps keep us clean. And a tip is to spray a little bit of mineral oil in there, and then when you put your liner in, it's gonna help that liner stay in place while you're mixing all your ingredients. Otherwise, it'll, it likes to slide around on you, so. First, we're gonna begin with getting our 20 pounds. We're gonna do 20 pounds of deer trim, four pounds of pork fat, and uh, one pound, or excuse me, four pounds of pork trim and one pound of pork fat to make a 25 pound batch out of today's deer. Next step is the four pounds of pork trim. So we're just gonna add that right into our deer trim. And we conveniently sell the pork fat in a two and a half pound bag. You can use a two and a half pound bag for your 25 pounds. In this case, we're putting some pork trim in, so we're only gonna use a pound of this uh, pure pork fat. So there's a perfect mix of 20 pounds of venison trim, four pounds of pork trim, and one pound of pure pork fat. All right, so we're gonna separate our ingredients because we have a few of these ingredients that go in prior to grinding and a few of the ingredients that go in after grinding. So our jalapeno powder and flakes and our cheese go in after grinding. Of course, um, our casings, now these are unique in the sense, these are a 32 millimeter casing. However, these are a processed casing. And by that, what, what we mean is these are tougher. So you're able to take these and hang them into a smokehouse. In fact, you're actually able to tie them. We're gonna show you a method of tying those, but you cannot use the regular clear collagen casings to hang your sausage or else it'll break. You must have the 32 millimeter clear smoke sausage casing, specifically designed, it's tougher, specifically designed to hang in a smokehouse. So we're gonna be showing you those. Um, we're going to, of course, have our base flavor of seasoning that goes in there. You can add hickory smoke powder if you wish. It kind of depends on what your smoking method is. Um, if you don't feel like you have a way of getting real good smoke, you add the natural hickory smoke powder and it gives you some awesome smoke flavor. And then I wanna talk about cures. So we have two different options. One is your pink cure. Um, this one's very popular. It's also very cheap. Um, it's a um, synthetic cure. And we use cures really for a couple reasons. Probably the number one is safety. Cure is going to prevent um, bacterial growth in processed meats, specifically when you're smoking them. And with game meats, you know, in that environment, maybe not quite as clean as in a process setting. So um, cure is definitely recommended. So it's going to prevent bacterial growth. It's going to make a safer product. It's also going to improve color. It's going to improve texture and it's going to improve um, shelf life. Now, doesn't mean you can't, you don't need to refrigerate it. It just means that um, in the package, in the refrigerator, it's going to um, greatly improve it. That's using Pink Cure Sodium Nitrite. That's been around for ages. That's the synthetic chemical version. We now have available in this modern era, uh, the natural things. So this was basically born out of a desire for a clean label in commercial industry. And we're using two, um, basically two components. Um, one is a celery juice powder. Um, it's much more costly because this is a particular process to, to get this derivative um, of celery, but celery contains naturally occurring nitrites. So we have celery juice powder that can be used as a one-one replacement for the sodium nitrite. 
So you can, instead of putting a packet of sodium nitrate in 25 pounds, you can put a packet of celery juice powder. Also, we have cherry powder or cherry juice powder. This is a cure accelerator. It contains ascorbic acid. That's, um, it's, it's important when we're using the natural methods. And now with this combination of these two can effectively replace this. So you can get a naturally cured product. Same exact results. In fact, um, I can put a study in the description that you can go and, and um, search this out. But this is using natural vegetable derived, or in this case, vegetable and fruit derived, um, naturally occurring compounds to create the exact same effect as the pink cure. So today we're actually gonna use the natural method. We can set this one aside for another day. Um, and then lastly, we've got some labels here we can put on our package product when we're all done just to identify it. So let's get started. This is our salt and pepper base. So pretty simple ingredients, salt and pepper, um, but it makes a fantastic base for this type of, of sausage. I'm gonna dump the ingredients in as Scott mixes. It's always handy to have a partner to help with, with this type of, of thing, especially when you want the seasonings distributed really well in your products. Speaking of which, we like to put the seasonings on the trim um, and then grind it, because that's gonna really, really blend that in, um, as opposed to, to trying to incorporate the seasonings into a ground product. So we always <clears throat> pre-mix our seasonings. So now we're gonna go in with the, the celery juice powder that Scott talked about. He did mention that he thought maybe he got a little long-winded talking about it, but um, I don't think so because it's a topic that can be kind of confusing. So um, hopefully you understand better the use of this product after watching uh, what Scott had to say. And this is where it's, it's most handy to have someone else helping because you can mix, add more, mix, add more, that type of procedure. That way you get a nice... A nice mix going. So now that the celery powder is in there, we're going to go in with the, the cherry juice powder. This is what's going to be the cure accelerator. It's going to give it that nice color when it's finished smoking. So 2.5 ounces of, of celery powder and one ounce of cherry juice powder per 25 is the size of these packets. And then this one is our hickory smoke. Oh man, that smells so good. It smells like it's, get a little whiff of that. Imagine it's yourself, fall. imagine yourself at Thanksgiving, at, there's a fire uh, going. Imagine yourself at deer camp, sharing it with your family and friends. And as mentioned, this is a, a natural hickory smoke flavor, so it's not a, not a fake flavor. You can add this, um, you can add this to hamburger meat if you want, um, and then throw it on your grill or put it in a skillet on your oven. Just whatever you want to, to add you know, to the product to give it a nice smoke flavor, grab some of this. It, it really enhances the product. Now that we're at the grinding step, I'm just getting my cheese ready. We've got the two and a half pounds of high temp cheddar cheese, which ironically, we're packing off 520 packs of high temp cheddar cheese. As we speak, this is a creamy, oh so delicious cheese. And then Scott's hot tip, I'm gonna take my, <clears throat> these always get you, my jalapeno, dried flakes and my jalapeno powder. The powder is what actually adds all that incredible flavor and some of that heat. <clears throat> I'm gonna take these two and um, combine them in this bag. It's real important that you put the powder with the flakes because otherwise you won't get the results we you're looking for. We want to coat those up and yeah, it's, it's a combo type deal. <clears throat> all right, so that way when Seth grinds, those are gonna be um, ready to go. And I'm gonna kind of layer them in there like, you know, we're making ice cream, he's grinding. 
Uh, because this is a two, uh, this is the dual plate grinder, we only need to make one pass through here. It's first gonna coarse grind it. Then it's going to like medium or fine grind it. So what we're left here will be ready to stuff and I'll incorporate the added ingredients in it as he's grinding. This is the dual grind grinder. This is the one horse. I do have the foot pedal hooked up. We have it in forward. So it's gonna be a simple, pretty simple process. I press on the pedal, meat goes through the grinder. We're gonna get some down inside the worm before we get started. Just start with getting some of that meat down inside that stuffing horn so we don't run it dry. Now just press on the pedal and start grinding. We, we mentioned dual grind. That's a beautiful feature on this made with meat grinder. You only have to go through this one time. And then as I'm grinding, Scott's gonna be mixing in the cheese and jalapenos. I know I saw you hit your stopwatch, Scott. Let's see what we got How here. How many minutes to do 25 pounds through this one horse grinder? Oh, three minutes and 38 seconds through the meat dual grind grinder. 25 pounds. 25 pounds, that's how fast this thing chews through that product. So just a little tip for you. Go ahead and unplug your, your foot pedal when you're not using the grinder because you, um, you don't want to step on the pedal if you're messing with changing out your blades or your um, anything, the worm or anything like that because that would lead to a bad accident. So just use caution and unplug your foot pedal when you're not using your grinder. So I'm gonna hand mix this now that I got it in here. Seth's adding um, a little bit of cold water. That just helps with lubricating the, the mixture when we go to stuff it and um, yeah, it just keeps, especially when you start putting dry ingredients in there, it really starts to soak up any moisture that's in the product. So we'll add water as needed. Basically, if you're having trouble stuffing, it's probably because your mixture's too dry, you need to add some water. I've got in front of me our most popular bratwurst flavors that we make here at White Feather Meats. Any combination that we have in front of you is gonna build out those seven most popular selling flavors. These are absolutely amazing. Add any protein you want. It could be pork, it could be your venison, it could be a mixture of both. You can do beef, whatever you've got avail available to you. You use these bratwurst kits, you're gonna have some awesome tasting bratwurst. So now that we've added the water, we've added the cheese, we probably got closer to 30 pounds here. It's a 15 pound stuffer, so we look to get about half of the batch in here and then we'll Run it out and do the other half of the batch. You can see the product coming out, coming out of our horn here. So now, so we need to get our casings on there. So each tube will do 20 pounds. So there's nothing in this pouch to do 40. We're gonna go ahead and put about half of this on the horn and then we'll cut it in half. But um, you can see you don't want to put it on this way. You want to do, use your open end and put it on your horn. Get about halfway. I'm going to go ahead and tie this since we're going to be linking these. This does have an airlock release right here on the top of this bolt. You want to push that down as you're augering your plunger down, otherwise it'll give you problems because you'll fill that, fill that chamber with a bunch of air. So I left a little bit of casing on the end just to tie it up, seal that end shut, just like that.
Just finishing up this 25 pounds. I do want to mention something here. You can see that this product, now that we have it in these casings, but it's had a chance to sit for a little bit. But you can see it's kind of tar turned dark in color, and that's because that cure is starting to work. Um, so don't get concerned by that, because when we smoke it, uh, it'll turn a nice cherry red. But as that cure starts to work, you will see that product darken up a little bit. So on our hot dog video, we showed you the method of tying. You had to be really super, super slow and cautious with these casings if you want to try this, but it does, it is a way to um, tie them up. So you make a twist, the, the length that you want to link, and you make another fold like that, and you can twist them like that, and then you're going to make a pinch right here. You got to make sure your casings aren't too tight. And then you slowly push this through where you pinch that. You can twist these a little bit and you've got three in a link like that. Then you start over again, pinching that. Just be super cautious if you use this method because of the tightness of the casing, you, you will break them if you're not careful. So while Scott's demonstrating twisting, I'm just hanging these strands like you see here. And those are just gonna go on our smokehouse truck. Just, just as a, a straight strand like that. And then we can cut them into links after they're smoked. That one's for you, Seth. I bet you'd be pretty good at tying balloon animals. What do you want it to be? Is it a gazelle? Is it a... Um, uh, a snake. It's a, it's a gazelle. Okay, it's a gazelle. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going in the EnviroPack Martini 280. This is in our commercial butcher shop here. And we're just going to get these smoked sausages put into, this, into the smoker. And then what we want to do is we want to probe these. Just like that. And we're gonna seal them up. And I have a schedule specifically made for smoked sausage. So, so we just grab our schedule, sausage with shower. And we run it, start schedule. Now we wanna go over here and check our hickory wood chips. This is a real hickory wood chip so not only did we add the hickory smoke powder inside the product but we also have the real hickory wood chips those fall down onto a hot plate and then they smoke uh, throughout the process so if you don't have something like this we understand you can use your pellet grill at home you can use your yoder smoker you can use your offset scott and i were taught were even talking while we were processing you can probably just use your oven at home since it has hickory smoke powder added to the product so we're expecting these to go uh, probably about five or six hours to an internal temp of about 160. Uh, in the meantime we're just going to hang out maybe make some more diy products and wait for these to come out of the smokehouse Just finished showering with our jalapeno and cheddar smoked sausage, our venison smoked sausage. We have a low core temp of 77 degrees. Time to get it out and get it in the cooler. So now these, we did take these to a, a fully cooked temperature. Um, so it is safe to eat right now. You can see that nice, I talked about that red color, um, real nice color on them. So these are ready to eat since they're fully cooked. However, um, I think maybe we're going to throw one over a campfire, maybe on a stick and give it a try. But until then, let's get them cooling down in the cooler.
So, summer or let's we'll start over. Again. <laughs> you got stuff in your beard. I, not with a knife. Venison smoke. <laughs> you ever seen that 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 <laughs> commercial one of those that commercial where this <laughs> that couple is trying to say it and she gives them a hard time and then she can't say it. <laughs> Venison summer sausage. Nope. <laughs> Venison smoked kielbasa. Not even that. Oh, okay. Ch jalapeno and cheddar. <laughs> smoked jalapeno and cheddar sausage. All right, here's our venison smoked jalapeno and cheddar sausage. These are the ones that were um, tied, so those those come those come apart pretty easy. Stack these guys over here. I'm just going to square up these ends. That can be Rover's take. Cut these in about nice sandwich length Boy, those look great don't they look at that the jalapeno the cheese those look really good all right these two look pretty good to me let's throw them on the fire As mentioned, these are pre-cooked, so all we're doing is heating them up. <clears throat> Just want that cheese to soften up a little bit, and then we'll eat them. Right. You, you man in the tongs? <laughs> yeah. I like it. My man. Boston and I have been fist bumping probably since he could walk, so every time I see Boston, we fist bump. Don't How are they one. coming along, bud? Good. About there, Boston? Yeah. <laughs> Check for about 80. Let's see what we got here, son. Oh, yeah. Those are about ready to come off. I think we're ready. I'll set them right up here. Yeah. Excellent. I'll borrow those tongs from you if I could. We gotta get some tasty get little. Get on over here, Boston. Come on tasty over. Tasty little bits here. You, you helped, helped cook it, so you gotta taste it. Let's see how hot it is. He said he doesn't know if he can handle jalapeno and cheddar. He's never had it. You're about far You want to try a little bite? Like yeah. Half bite. That. Okay. Get that piece because that has it's more cheese and cheese. less jalapenos. Mm. That's good. Oh. Oh. Wow. That is delicious. Boy, good job cooking those. Thanks. Just leave that one whole, would you? It's getting hot. Thank you. Oh. Huh. Smoky, delicious flavor. Any other gang you one? cut one in half, I want to get, just get a bite. Oh. That's where it's at. Oh, man. Guys, try these. Oh. Get in here, everybody. I'm, I'm, you guys Logan, usually give over. it to me, I'm taking. Grab some great. Hey, John, in there. I'm going to try one of these big ones. Dang. Hmm. Logan, get in here. Smoky. Got that jalapeno bite. Mm. What do you think? But not. That's awesome. Not too crazy. Wow. Hmm. There's a very all around, like, natural flavored product. Like, so good. Don't forget, you have to have those smoke casings so you can hang it otherwise it'll be a mess they'll fall in your smokehouse these like seth said they can be eaten cold because it's fully cooked coming out of the mm. if, if you cook it to what'd you tell them 154 155 160 160 is always safest so yeah absolutely and then you got that high temp cheese in there that jalapeno wow that's that's killer dude so deer jalapeno cheddar Smoked sausage, turned out incredible. Highly recommend, 10 out of 10 on this one. You know there, there you see it. You know what's fantastic? We ate a pound. There's 
I don't know, we ended up with what? Probably 28 or 29 pounds by the time we added the cheese and stuff. This is all gonna get vacuum sealed. It's gonna go into our freezer and we get to enjoy this with family and friends throughout the whole rest of wow, the year, throughout the winter. Fantastic. Love it. Thanks for watching The Beard of Butchers right here on YouTube. Stay tuned for more recipes just like this. Until next time, see ya.